Hey everyone, so on this episode of Make It With Calvin, we're going to be creating some rail car loads here for in this case it's a Bachman ON30 side dump or car and we're going to be using this gold foam, sculpting foam, really it's high density urethane foam. So let's talk about it. So before we go any further on this project, we should probably talk about safety, which is why I have my dual cartridge respirator here with some good quality filter cartridges. This foam, when you're carving it, makes a lot of dust and you don't necessarily want to be breathing that dust in. So I highly recommend you wear some kind of a good high quality filtration device, an N95 or higher face mask. Buy a quality one, don't buy the knockoffs. Your lungs will thank you for it. Okay, safety talk aside, let's actually talk how we're going to do this. I already went ahead and cut these foam blocks off camera. Very easily cuts with a hacksaw. And I made it so that it just fits inside the rail car. This does not need to be perfect because we are going to come along and put something on the top of it to simulate the rail car load. So you'll see it just fits in there nicely. And I also wanted to make it something that I could easily pull in and out so that way I can simulate the rail cars loaded, rail cars unloaded, all that good stuff. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to come along and sculpt the foam into the rough shape that I need. I think I'm just going to use some sandpaper for that. And the, the goal that I'm going for here is kind of a single dome load, like the car was filled up in the center and then the load somewhat fell via gravity to the sides. So let me get to work on that. Now that we have the sanding done, here we have the ore car. Oops, there we have the ore load. You can see it, yeah, definitely kind of has the look that I'm going for. I'm not does not need to be perfect because once we put the actual topping on top, you can kind of sculpt it a little more from there. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna seal the foam because it has somewhat of a soft sandstone like texture and it will slowly crumble away. Just gonna use a little bit of this Mod Podge. Um, this is the matte version. I don't think it really matters. I'm gonna coat the whole model with this just so that way there's a hard shell exterior. And this is also a little bit loose inside the rail car, so I think it'll build up a little bit of room. I'm just gonna use this old bag here as a surface. Put that on it, let it dry. I'm also gonna do that to the underside. And then we'll go from there. One thing I have thought about doing is actually coming along and putting some kind of metal object in here. I need to see if I've got some steel or something. So that way this can be removed using a magnet as well. But I'll update you on that if I actually do it. Okay, so now we're back. I've let the Mod Podge on this dry, I would say, long enough. So now it's time to come along with some paint that is a similar-ish color to the material that we're using. In this case, this is just some um, burnt sienna that I got down the street at the wonderful Holy Hobby. And I'm gonna poop a little out there. So the idea is I'm just going to cover the whole block in this, including the bottom parts. You know what? I'm smart and safe. I'm going to... There we go. Don't recommend doing that, but whatever. So the point behind the paint on here is it provides 
not only a sticky surface for the material, but it also provides a nice base coat. So just in case this gets chipped, you don't have to see the hyper unrealistic foam underneath. So I'm gonna say that's good enough. So now I can pull out my ethically sourced, I'm not gonna state from where though, that is a secret, um, Lava Rock. Um, yeah. You gently uh, not make a mess of this and sprinkle it on. Okay. I'm gonna say that's on there good enough. Now, obviously there is a little bit stuck to the sides. What I'm actually thinking I'm gonna do is I'm gonna wait until the paint has dried. That's gonna come off really easily and then to help bond the stuff onto the top side here, I'm actually going to come along with a little scenic cement after the fact to really bond it in place. So back to the waiting game called waiting for things to dry and then we'll come back and glue everything on permanently. The main idea behind the paint is it just provides a tacky enough surface that things uh, temporarily stick. I'm gonna need to vacuum the table as well. That's heavy. All right, so here we have it. This is the finished rail car load. Now you'll see it might look a little white in spots. That's just because I'm waiting for a little bit of white glue that I use to hold some pieces that weren't sticking as much as they should have in place. But you'll also notice the underside is slightly concave. I do think I am going to put um, a washer or something like that in here. So I'm able to pull things in and out easily with a magnet, but one thing I did notice is I accidentally cut the block a little too high and then when I was sanding it, I didn't sand it enough. So I'm exaggerating it, but the load would have sat more like that instead of sitting somewhat recessed in there, which is the ultimate goal. So this one is done. I'm not exactly sure how many of these rail cars I'm actually gonna run here on the extension, but you get the idea. This is a quick and easy way to make some unique rail car loads. So I hope you guys found this useful and interesting. I'll see you here next time on Make It With Calvin.